breakfast time and we've just fueled up. Just to get ready for a very special exercise we're going to undertake this morning, which looks at the sometimes difficult relationship between Ireland's HGV drivers and our cyclists on our busy roads. Let's go! I need a huge amount of space. Well, isn't that the point? I mean, city streets yeah. aren't designed for HGVs. They weren't built for that. They weren't built, and it poses huge challenges when you're driving along, trying to keep safely. It's important to make sure that other road users around you have seen you. You can't presume that they know where you're supposed to be. That's the dangerous point, the blind zone there. I'm turning left here, scanning for pedestrians and cyclists. And really, I lose a lot of visibility just at this point. I can't really see what's happening to my side until the trailer pulls straight again. The message here really is that you're looking all the time, aren't you? Both sides. I have to look all the time, yes. But also, cyclists have to look as well and be aware of what truck drivers are doing. Now, because this truck is indicating left, there's no way I'm going up on his inside because the chances are he hasn't seen me. He's got a lot to concentrate on. I'm just not going to get involved. Oh my heavens, I tell you what, if that cyclist had to come up when you were inside there, when you were making that turn, that could have been just a little bit interesting. It could have been very interesting. There's one of the city bikes coming up here, because I can see that white light on the front. Yeah, and you see him, at, there he goes. at a certain point, I lose him from the mirrors completely. Yeah. And then he comes through again. Where if the cyclist is in that blind zone and moving forward at the same pace as we are, they can be in that blind zone for many, many seconds. It's a very, very dangerous place to be. At the moment, I can't see the HGV's mirrors, so there's a fair chance that he's got no idea I'm here. These things aren't really as manoeuvrable as cars. They just don't move as quickly. They don't pull away as quickly. And they just can't follow a straight line in the same way as a car can. Oh, not at all. When you're turning into a left turn, you have really to go past the turn with your cab, with your tractor unit, and then turn back at the last minute. And while you're doing that, you lose a huge amount of visibility. On a bend like this, it's easy to cut the corner and cut off the cycle lane or worse. Ideally, vehicles should follow the centre line rather than cutting the corner. I'm always trying to leave about a metre and a half between me and the car because for many reasons cyclists can't always follow a straight line. Yeah and these big vehicles they can not only intimidate cyclists but they can generate a whole lot of turbulence as well when they're moving fast. If the lights have just turned red I can feel confident positioning myself in front of the HGV um, but I'll just double check that he see me and that I've made my presence felt. If the lights have been red for quite some time, there's no way I've, I would have gone up on his inside because the lights could have changed to green, he could have turned left and quite rightly wouldn't have had any idea that I was there. At this point I can take the dominant position in the advanced stop line. Advanced stop lines are for cyclists and all other motorised traffic must stay behind them. Um, if they don't they could face up to an 80 euro fine and two penalty points on their licence. Elaine, what did you learn today? Um, you've just got to remember that you're not in some kind of protective bubble. It's no one else's responsibility ultimately to make sure that you're safe. It's your responsibility and I felt that very keenly. So Mark, this is a pretty big truck. It is indeed Elaine, it's an articulated vehicle which uh, differs from a rigid in that as you're taking a turn with the rigid you, you never lose sight of the body of the vehicle. Whereas with an articulated vehicle, as it turns, your mirror turns in on the vehicle and the vehicle is at right angles. So you have a very, very large line zone while you're taking the turn and until you have it completed. Okay, so you're opening just up a much bigger blind zone to the cyclists. You are indeed. Cyclists really need to know this. They do indeed, yeah. Let's have a look at these blind zones again. If we get Ronnie to wander around the truck, let me see when you can see him and when you can't see him. I can't see him now. 
Well, now he's in my mirror, but there was a good sort of two seconds when I couldn't see him. That's correct, and that's how quickly it happens and how quickly collisions can be caused. Okay, he's gone behind the truck now. You have no visibility there. I'm going to look on the other all. side. Okay, I can see him in my right mirror now. He's walking up towards me. Okay, he's nearly completely out of view. I can't see him. <laughs> oh God, there he is. <laughs> yeah, and that's correct. And that's how quickly it happens and how quickly collisions can be caused, even in that split second. Okay. That was really interesting. I mean, there was probably a good two seconds where I couldn't see him at all. Yeah, just imagine you're driving along and you're observing one cyclist, when possibly there could be two or three suddenly appearing from both sides. And when you come round to the front, you can't really observe them straight away. So you know they could be closer to the lorry and you haven't seen them. There are obviously mirrors scattered all around the lorry, but all the mirrors don't cover every area. Ronnie, how are you? Elaine, anyway, what do you think of that? Brilliant, very good. Yeah, that was great fun and very enlightening. And in future, I hope you'll stay out of my blind zones. I will, and you stay aware of cyclists. I certainly will. Okay, everybody, stay safe.